In the 19th century, Sir George Cayley designed a glider that could carry a person. From this knowledge, many others were able to continue the work. One of the most notable contributions to the science of aviation came from two inventors determined to fly. The Wright brothers, Wilbur and Orville, were the first people to achieve powered, controlled, human-carrying flight. Wilbur was even born right here in Indiana. The early stages of their tests involved using kites, model airfoils, wind tunnels, and gliders. I'm sure they would have used a glider like the FPG-9 if only they had foam plates back in the early 20th century. These tests helped them understand the weight lift thrust drag ratios that made it possible for them to fly. Lift is the force that causes an object to go up, and weight is the opposing force that causes the object to go down. Thrust is the force that moves an object forward, and drag is the opposing force that slows an object down. The Wrights knew they needed a shape that resulted in a lot of lift and very little drag. So when thrust was applied, it would be enough to keep the weight of the aircraft in the air. One way they tested the aerodynamics of wing shapes was by using a wind tunnel. A wind tunnel is another kind of a model. It's a model of the environment. A wind tunnel helps scientists understand how an object would behave in moving air. In 1903, after compiling years of research and testing, the Wright brothers' work finally paid off. Their first flight would launch the start of modern aviation. In Indiana, the importance of studying aviation was immediately realized. Schools all over the state began to develop courses, programs, and degrees in aeronautics. A good example of this can be found at Purdue University. From Amelia Earhart to 23 astronauts and counting, Purdue has been leading the way in aeronautical engineering for decades. That's one small step for man. Purdue University graduated the first man to walk on the moon. One giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong. And also the last man to walk on the moon, Gene Cernan. Gene has first-hand experience with the importance of using models. The testing on, on models, everything from scaled models to full-size shuttles or Apollos in terms of putting them in altitude chambers is significantly important because it's much more important to find a problem on the ground and be able to solve it than to have that problem that you didn't expect somewhere up there. Purdue was the first university in the nation to have its own airport. Today, various forms of aeronautical studies take place, and some studies still involve using a wind tunnel. I'm sitting inside the test section of the subsonic wind tunnel. This is where the model is placed. Wind tunnels can be very small or big enough to test an actual full-size design. I think the essence of an engineer is to figure out how to build things better. We have a tunnel here where we make measurements at Mach 6 on wind tunnel models. So we make measurements for different Air Force and NASA programs. There's very large advantages of putting models in wind tunnels. Actual flights are expensive. Some test flights can cost over $50 million. By working with a wind tunnel, scientists and engineers can get a lot of information on the ground first. But with these devices, it's all about the numbers and what they can tell us. The data is collected by using instruments that measure everything from air pressure to air speed. So you don't really see anything. 